An unusual trend is taking place in the real estate world. Private equity firms are looking to acquire high-end resorts. Case in point, Cypress Equities, uh, Cypress Equities, a firm tied to Roger Staubach, the legendary Dallas quarterback, is talking about buying an unfinished resort in Anguilla. And this is just not any resort, folks. This is a resort that defaulted on its loans and among the people leading the development of that resort, the guy who co-founded the company that produced American Idol, named Robert Silliman. What makes these resorts such attractive targets for private equity? We're going to find out right now with Jonathan Keener. He's here with us on the Inside Track. Jonathan, Roger Stomach, Robert Silliman, two big names, not really battling it out because Silliman has walked away from this project. Some big names in this story, yes. Yes, this is uh, what I would call more anecdotal evidence that we're seeing these, to your, to your words, uh, high-end luxury resorts starting to trade hands. Uh, the whole hospitality sector really got hit hard, and some of these uh, high-end resorts were probably the first to get hit and now are the first to come back around as far as being attractive assets for private equity firms. Uh, this one is a 275-acre resort uh, unfinished in, in the Caribbean island of Anguilla. Now, now, what is really going on here? Is it, is it a case of the original borrowers, because it's often debt financed, right? Yep. Not having enough money or just deciding that the potential payoff isn't really worth the risk that they undertook at the price that they walked into and saying, I'm just walking away it from this. It seems to be a matter, actually, of the, the lenders not really having the appetite to either finish financing these, mm. to commit to running them. That seems to be going on. There's another resort, Tamarack, that we mentioned, which is in uh, Idaho, big ski resort that just filed for bankruptcy. Obviously, C Island, which we've covered a lot outside of Georgia, another one, and KSL just bought uh, California Squaw Valley, which was home to the 1960 Winter Olympics, yeah, uh, another private equity firm. I noticed in this particular case of the resort, the unfinished resort in Anguilla, the lender, as you point out, lenders are key here, the lender was Credit Suisse, Credit Suisse yep. a company that did a lot of dodgy real estate lending back in the middle of the decade, says that it's learned its lesson and no longer does that. Those guys have gone off to other firms, but would it, should it surprise anybody, Credit Suisse yep. is the lender of record Yellowstone, here. you remember well. There's many more. Yes, Credit Suisse, Deutsche Bank, lots of large Wall Street banks had just massive hospitality lending programs and really no appetite to run these run these programs now. And what you're starting to see are the private equity firms that amassed a, a big war chest coming in now. So a lot of these luxury properties likely to change hands, this being one more example. Talk to us a bit about Robert Sillerman. He's the guy who's walking away from this project. It's not like he isn't in real estate. He owns Graceland. That's right. That's right. And he actually emailed us, uh, told us in the story he'd committed $200 million personally to this project. So obviously just a disaster for him. And uh, he wrote that he hopes it does get completed. A lot of negotiations with the uh, government going on right now. So we'll see what happens. Do but, we have any sense as to whether he's going to recover any of that $200 million or I don't, although it's, it would seem unlikely because uh, the Credit Suisse has seized it. It's in receivership. And now it's a matter of who owns the debt. Uh, Credit Suisse financed $180 million dollars of loans for this in 2006 went into default in 2008. So the timing was just about as bad as it could be relative to this type of property. Now, it's not always the case that the lender decides to walk away, as you've reported. In fact, I think you were among the first people to report it. Deutsche Bank did decide in the that's end right. to go and develop a casino, of all things, in Las Vegas. And that's what's so interesting. It's, 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 uh, you'd love to be a fly on the wall for when these decisions are made as to whether a European bank wants to run a Caribbean resort or a Las Vegas <laughs> casino. But yeah, in the case of Cosmo, I'm sure you've seen the ads. They're all over the place. It's about to open, and Deutsche Bank still owns it. Uh, in the case of uh, this, uh, um, Credit Suisse decided they did not want to run and finish building a, a Caribbean resort. And at so. the end of the day, this is really just a story about distressed debt in the wake of a financial crisis. The lenders, as you point out, don't want to commit capital to it. And it makes these resorts easy prey, doesn't it, for people like... That's uh, right. Uh, Barry Stern, like that Starwood Capital, or in this case, Roger right. Staubach. It's also a little bit, perhaps, a story of the macro economy. I mean, if, if guys like Barry Stern like are coming in and buying these, maybe that's a sign that we've really hit the bottom and we're starting to come back up. Because you are seeing, anecdotally, again, many, many more of these deals coming through. Likely a story we'll see through next year as well, and we'll keep an eye on it, of course. Jonathan, always great to have you here in the Inside Track. We love it when you come in and talk about these great stories that he's reporting. Jonathan Keener of Bloomberg, everybody.